guys, Joe Doyle, Education and Engagement Curator here at White Labs Asheville's Kitchen and Tap. Hi, I'm Kara, I'm our Head of Lab Operations here. So today we're gonna go over a flight of beer and we're gonna go over our Belgian Pale Ale with WLP 515 Antwerp Ale Yeast, our Belgian Pale Ale with WLP 550, our Hazy IPA with WLP 067, and our Hazy IPA with WLP 518. And we'll break down those a little bit more in depth. So starting off with the Belgian Pale Ale with WLP 515, the Antwerp Pale Yeast. This strain is definitely more malt forward than it is a yeast forward Belgian strain, um, which I personally really like because I'm not a big fan of phenolics or heavy esters in Belgian beer. The spicy characteristic is still there for sure. You can tell it's a Belgian strain, mm -hmm. but just not nearly as pronounced as if you were to, yeah. to compare it to other, yeah, other strains. Yeah, totally. All right, so moving on to our Belgian Pale Ale with WLP 550. This beer has the same malt bill. It's got that Pilsner biscuit, the Caramunic One malts. It's got the same Hallertau hop additions. The big difference in this yeast strain though is it's more expressive. Yeah, I get a lot of ester characteristic out of this. There's some banana character. And this is also a strain that you can, if you were using it at home, you could easily turn up the expression by just you know letting the fermenter free rise. Or if you want a little bit less expressive, you could maybe ferment closer to around 65, 68 Fahrenheit. Oh, cool. And then you could have a little bit less of that expression, but still some of that character there. Okay, so you're saying that you can kind of control that and either boost it or diminish it definitely based on your uh, mm -hmm. fermentation temperatures. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that strain is um, definitely very versatile. Let's move on to our hazy IPAs. So we're gonna start off with our uh, hazy IPA with WLP 067. Now this is our coastal haze blend. For this coastal haze blend, um, it was something that I designed mainly because I wasn't quite satisfied with the different styles of hazy. I I particularly like my hazy styles really dry, but also still fruity. Mm -hmm. And that's not for everybody, but that's just kind of how I like them. And so I basically took some of our drier hazy strains and mixed them with some of our less attenuative. So you still get some of that juicy sweetness, yeah. but you still, you don't have that cloying finish on the tongue. Yeah. When you compare the hazy coastal blend with the beer we'll talk about in a second, the quike blend, I think you can really see how that yeast strain accentuates the hop, so it really works with it, right? And some people might say that's part of biotransformation. You know, there's still a lot being done scientifically with what's going on with that, but you can definitely tell there's a major difference between these two in terms of aroma and flavor and, and working with those hops there. So this is our hazy IPA. This is with our WLP 518, our Opshock Wyak Ale Yeast. So we had chosen um, this strain because I thought we, you know, we had looked at a lot of different strains for different beers and we wanted to be a little bit unique. No one was commercially making this this strain, right? And this this came from the Opshark farm in Norway. So we, we went kind of that direction also because it was really neutral. So I thought it was a really cool strain and that it can be fermented very warm, but also really neutral and can be used in a lot of different beers. What we've seen become really popular in the US is basically using them for hazy beers, yeah, right? Yeah. So sometimes people want them to be a little bit more estery, a little bit more fruity to complement those mm -hmm. hops. You, you get less tropical from this, but mm -hmm. I still think it's really dry. Yeah. It's still really nice. I think there is a little bit of an ester character. Sure. But and works really well with the hops, but just isn't fruit bomb in your face, which yeah. isn't always for everybody, right? But it's a really interesting strain in that fermenting it, you know, very warm. So these I believe this one, we probably fermented it around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's crazy. Which is, yeah, which is unheard <laughs> of for most, you know, ale strains that we're gonna use. It's really unique and I think especially so attractive for home brewers or even people that live in countries that, you know, for commercial brewing that just don't have access to glycol all the time or yeah, being able sure. to chill beers, yeah. So uh, those of you guys at home that are watching, if you're home brewers or professional brewers, please comment below with what is your favorite strain or strains, you know, and why, what do you like to do? Or also if or what any... weird things have you put together yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. you didn't think might work, but ended up working out really well. Really thank you for sitting down and joining me today. I know you're really busy, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I always enjoy some lunch beers. <laughs> cool, until next time.